Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. Got it. All right, folks. Travis Brown, Horror Movies Uncut, Submissions and Smashers podcast. I am joined by Eric Bloomquist and the lovely brother and sister combination from a film, A Night in Eagle Inn. Folks, what is going on, people? How are we doing today? How are you guys feeling? And how excited are you guys for people to see this nice little uh, supernatural film that we definitely got to talk about? Eric, I'll kick it off with you. How are we doing since the last year that we talked? I'm good, man. I mean, the sun is uh, starting to shine figuratively, <laughs> not literally. It's uh, pretty, pretty gray over Pretty here. gray day, but we're feeling okay. good. We're ready, to, we're ready to share this movie. And yes. uh, I don't know. I don't know. Taylor, Amelia. Amelia hasn't seen it. Taylor has seen it. Okay. How, Amelia, how, how, how you're caffeinated right now, so I know you're doing a little bit better, but how excited are you for people to see this movie right now? I'm excited to see this movie. I, mm-hmm. I feel like like both <laughs> I'm excited for other people to see it but my my own personal sense of selfishness is just like well I just want to see it too because right <laughs> now like my mom has seen it and I have oh, she has oh wow it. well I mean yeah. mama, yeah. mama mama so, gave claim uh, on everything first that's just how it goes mama always yeah, yeah so stuff, she but. should be on this podcast honestly facts, um, facts. she'd probably be like it was great I was so scared yeah and, and Taylor, I'll be Great honest. Impression. I like I like you with the with the dark hair more than. Oh, this is yeah. This is unnatural. Yeah. Okay, the, uh, okay. The blonde, is, the blonde hair is a little. It's a little hard to to keep up. Okay, I it didn't look bad. Look, it didn't I, look bad on you, man. It didn't look bad on you at all. You know, I liked I just, it. And yeah. I think it, I think it weirdly. Ella, Amelia was blonde before them. I don't. When did you die? Did you die at four? We died at four. The movie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I died back okay. in November. I died it the That's day it. before leaving. That's crazy. Hey, but we did. We did a project like five years ago where Taylor had the hair color he has now, and Amelia was blonde, and we just thought it'd be fun to switch. And it actually yeah. was very. It actually was very helpful for framing Taylor out of these very dark rooms and just okay. Him. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, all right, Eric, let's talk about this film. So A Night in Eagle Inn, um, right off the bat, man, I feel like we're in this realm with horror right now where it's like old school is like the only thing that I can think of. We got old school hotels, we got old school televisions, we got old school type of things going on. And it just seems like this nostalgia and horror just keeps popping itself up. So I'm curious to like, of course, where the story came from and you know was there any like actual events you know because when you hear stuff like this this kind of reminds you that this could possibly be some like weird little urban legend about some seedy hotel in the middle of nowhere um and if you live in the midwest like i do then you know those (laughs) that's a big possibility that that stuff's there so i'm curious to story where it came from where you guys came up with the idea uh we were shooting carson and i were shooting another movie in vermont this time last year we were actually traveling back a year ago today and I think you toured it on the way out again yep. there was this there was a, this hotel on property where, or near property where we were staying and we said we should just come back in two months and do another one we're mid-pandemic and we're just doing really small movies with with yep. friends and family um and so I had to jet back and, but Carson stayed and walked around it with some of the people yeah. and uh yeah. The, but, the inn was basically like begging to be shot in and had like a really great old school charm. And I said, yeah, what, what did you like, Carson, when you first stepped in there, like what were your feelings when you first stepped in there? Were you walking in like, yo, we need to definitely do something here? Yeah, it felt like what you'd feel like if you walked into a place someone said was haunted and yeah. you're like, you'd totally believe it. It uh, became defunct, I want to say like a decade ago. No, I think it was just a couple of years ago. A few years ago, but it felt like a little longer. Because <laughs> it, it had this... It had this somewhat operational feel while not yep. being like, you know, so antiquated. Like it, it could, it felt like no one had been there, but like, it wasn't like a dump. You know Which was I mean? good for our purposes because it didn't feel abandoned. Like it felt like it could still be active. It just felt mm-hmm. sleepy. So it was kind of great that it came pre set in a lot of ways for us. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, I felt like I felt like I was like, you know, being a coach of a fighter, we we kind of have stayed in some very seedy hotels. So I was like, I feel like I stayed at that place in some shape, form or fashion. Um, I think we all got lost in there at some point. I mean, we spent we would we would some of us would like go there to like work out in the gym that hadn't been used in a few years in the mornings. And it was that was a gym in there. Yeah. yeah, it was like <laughs> and even though it was like sunny, it was there was, was just like it was I don't know. It was it was, was fun. I mean, I love I love that stuff. Oh. Bo was um Bo Manier. I mean, obviously yep. he works yep. out a lot, and yep. you can tell. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Both so he, he, he doesn't try to hide it. Yeah. 
and he told us that we and there was no re- like no reception like no wi-fi in the hotel so like we all kind of had to just like stick together and he said that at one point he was there working out we had all wrapped for the day and had like driven back to where we were staying and he like walks out of the gym and he's like guys and like it's the <laughs> middle of the night like it's the hotel is completely abandoned and he was like fuck like i'm literally Ooh. about to get murdered here it's really creepy at night yeah, yeah. Amelia, Very, what, it's so what, yeah, tell me night. kind of yeah, tell me what like your feelings were when you're walking through this place that you guys were kind of becoming into your roles and everything, Amelia. What were your kind of feelings as you were walking through that place? Well, it it just it feels so authentic, um, as as everyone's been saying, um, because especially at night, because you know, when when the hallways are only illuminated by the exit signs and everything feels kind of dank and dark and dusty. And then also shooting in Vermont in November itself, the landscape contributes pretty heavily. There, there's there's uh, that scene where we're first arriving. We just happened to have this super overcast, gray, mm. misty day um, that felt so eerie. Um, yeah. And and well, the even way at that, the like, beginning when you guys would like curl around there. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you guys like when you guys are talking about like you know, and we're not going to give any spoilers away for the film, but when you guys are dealing with the weather elements there, like it's mm-hmm. like you could truly feel like the two of you like in getting touched by this 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 weather that you were dealing with there. So it just really kind of like you said added to the authenticity of the film. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I think, so, more, I think it made it more fun for us too. Yeah, I mean, just be yeah. kind of like. Yeah. enveloped in this space and detached from everything else we really just got to kind of go back to basics and to be able to do that and just i don't know it, the, the movie we did in september last year felt like it was they were both like vacation movies but they were just very different kinds of vacations they were okay. you know the, the first one was more like end of summer vacation and this was more like a i, I don't know how would you describe it taylor well, it, we, we braved the elements in our house like <laughs> we were lighting fires every night it was cool <laughs> but it was yeah it was very it was very much like man versus nature i was like this is what this is what thoreau felt like you know <laughs> writing walden no but it, was definitely, it definitely like just like i know we had like the one the scene that bo and i do in the restaurant mm-hmm. like the infamous night that we were shooting eric knows because it was like 40 degrees and the heat wasn't working and there in the pool that also like appears in the film uh and the sauna the sauna was operational so between setups we would like go run into the sauna and like all just like cram in there and like warm up and be like, all right, like let's do the next scene or the, the next yeah. shot. And we like run in and like do it for 10 minutes before we all like, you know. Yeah, I work. think the viewers really wouldn't be able to tell the season, but as I was watching, I was thinking like, you know, that kind of November when it's really starting to get into your December, cause you know, you're not really festive yeah, yet. It. You know what I mean? It's not really about like holiday season. It's just like, damn, it's cold outside, you know? Uh, and it's like, no, and everybody still kind of has little jackets on because we're all being stupid because we're still thinking it's like October. Uh, I didn't bring a big enough jacket. Like, <laughs> and I was like, well, shit. I shot myself in the phone on that one. So, so Karen, also, I'm, oh yeah, go ahead, Amelia. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's also, it's like that period of, of time where everything is decaying. Yes, it's all, all around you. So it's yeah. like, you know, you see that you see the trees outside when we're when we're walking outside the hotel, and everything is is kind of getting barren and right. dead and and dying, and so it enhances this kind of sense of like unease and like yeah. maybe this is not like a place for people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Bo made his first appearance in the film, I think I rewinded the, the film back like twice. I was like, that pool. There ain't no way in hell that pool is open over there. <laughs> I was like, it was frozen, no, it looks, it looks way too solid. Over. Yeah, was yeah. that, was that, was that ice on top of that thing? Yeah, it was black ice. Oh my god, that because I thought, man, it, I, that, I thought it was that, but I was like, no way in hell they're outside filming this movie and it's that cold out there. But it yeah. definitely looked. Bo like it was, was in short sleeves. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. that scene. Yeah, I, he didn't seem like he had any problem being in short sleeves. Nah. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his guns to keep him warm. <laughs> yeah, gun yeah. show was going on full effect. Keep him warm. That's yeah, funny. yeah. So Eric, when you're, look, this is a great cast and you could tell, of course, one of my biggest things with films is just trying to see the chemistry between all the actors and how they're relaying with each other. And it's to see like 
you guys all get separated, but yet still come together in certain parts. And then of course, um, I can't think of the name of his name right off the top of the head, but the manager, the manager of the hotel. Um, it just seemed like instantly when you guys all came together uh, for your scenes that it was just like a great amount of chemistry between Eric, did you notice, cause you've worked with these guys and girls for a minute before, did you know that this was gonna be able to like kind of do its own thing and be organic? Or was there anything that you really were like, hey guys, I wanna kind of keep us centered in on this. Like how much did you guys, you know, cause usually when you have people who've been doing movies with each other for a while, you can kind of play around, have some fun with the movie and actually kind of make it more of a, uh, a natural feel of chemistry for the viewer to see on the screen. So I'm curious and Eric, I'll start with you. Then of course, Amelia, you and Taylor can chime in. And um, uh, right after, so Carson, you can say also uh, you're, you're noticing, but I'm curious to like on set, you know, dealing with the elements, of course, we've already touched base on that, but in regards to the execution of the product, like how easy is it really when you're dealing with people you've worked with before? I, I think it's the biggest component is bringing in the right people for things. And one of the things that I think is most gratifying for us is being able to like find ways to showcase friends in uh, exciting ways that, that play to their strengths, but also surprise people. So mm -hmm. I think, I mean, one of the early conversations that we had with Taylor and Amelia was like, this was sort of written with them in mind, uh, based on, I think we started talking about it, like when we were doing Weekenders, which was the first movie we did in September. And okay. we just started talking about like, okay, we'll do one together. And then we had the idea, they had played twins before for us five years ago about doing that again, but flipping it and making them like, I don't know. I mean, Taylor, you can, you know, you guys can speak to those conversations, but that was a cool idea. And then the, it was like, but are there things that you guys want to do or vibes that you guys want to have or certain things? And that kind of fed into the writing. So it was this give and take. Um, but I think the big thing is just bringing in people that you trust that, you know, are going to use the paint and world that you're giving and, and just letting people play within it. Cause that's, that's the most fun thing is, you know, just, bringing in the right people to set up for success. And I think that that happens on the individual level. Mm -hmm. And when you do that right, the chemistry is just going to work. I'd worked with everybody in this in one capacity or another. And I yeah. just kind of felt everyone would vibe together. I don't know if you guys sure. want to come in and say stuff. Yeah. Amelia, go ahead, chime in. Yeah, um, I, I was I was just going to say, like in the, in the, the project we did um, five years ago, like Taylor and I were the creepy element in the room. We were okay. kind of like, the unnerving twins um and then in this the kind of creepy element is the thing that is all around us so it's more what is happening to us um and so that was a that was a fun thing to play with of like having that same sibling relationship but in as very different people um and i think also like eric has a particular strength of bringing together like really solid groups of people. I think he he knows how to cast um, and and play people's strengths. And it's great to like have the opportunity to work with with people who know how to do that and um, work with fun teams. Yeah, for sure. What you got, Taylor? Well, I can't stand any of these bitches. And <laughs> Real talk oh, well, right now. Point. Screw you. Real talk with Taylor point, Turner driven, right I've now. Up, driven to Vermont, tied up in the backseat. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I, what everyone has been saying is true. I was like, <laughs> so in, Eric is, and like, especially in movies like this that are so small and like done with like a, a smaller infrastructure, you got to have people that are like willing to be in the trenches with you and kind of like, all right, we're doing this shoot till 2.30 in the morning. Like just, we got to power through, but like everybody's there because they want to tell the story. For sure. Um, and like having worked with all these people before and um, Eric is also, he's very much like an actor's director mm -hmm. and having worked together for many years now, he knows our sensibilities and sort of knows, he can play to our strengths, but like with different shades. Yeah. Like in our case, like with the hair, like literally a different shade, but he, you know, <laughs> in the script, there were like some lines that were just like, there wasn't a line it was just like yeah. taylor specific witticism here and then yeah. like when we were shooting scenes i would just like come up with something that was like kind of funny and snarky and then we would workshop it over the course of several takes and then you know it would get put into the film but he's just very good at giving you a really solid framework but then even for like the the climax of the film you know where it's like there's some stage combat involved mm -hmm. amelia had some experience with that and so it was sort of 
stepped into like an impromptu fight choreographer role. And I was like, wait, what if we, you know, had them do this and then we like flipped the camera around and shot it from this way. Like we were all trying to sort of figure out how to solve the puzzle of like, how do we do this like huge climactic moment in the film and show it in a way that's exciting, but also, you know, heightened and very scary. That's a very good way of being vague about a very that was spoilery very, moment. That very was very effectively vague. I can, I can keep <laughs> 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 it. Come on, yeah. <laughs> specifically talk about I mean Carson's like we're, we're seeing how things are going and we shot this very right. quickly it's in eight days okay. um Carson's like rewriting certain moments mm -hmm. or like like changing the 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 end changed a little bit like on like okay. three or four and you know yeah yeah that, that, that sort of conversational I remember bringing it up um I think with Taylor and Bo because we were staying that we were staying in two separate places and Taylor and okay. Bo were and there was this idea to sort of shift a few details at the end and we worked through it together and just sort of like on the fly made sense of it in a way that I think kind of is for the betterment of the film. But I also think it's like, it's the type of movie we were doing where we have the freedom to sort of like have that liberty of, of creating while we're doing it. And yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, I, th I think it's very freeing to make a movie in that way where it is kind of like the, the it, it's, it's very communal. It's, it's very like, it was a very intimate way of making a movie. We made it with like, I think it was just like 10 or 11 of us all in casting yeah. crew um, that were on site. Um, and so there was this constant conversation and, and mutual professional respect, but also friendship that I think is the betterment of what we're doing. Yeah. So you guys constantly talk about like, you know, the small cast, the, the small amount of days. Carson, like, how does one make a film feel bigger when you know you guys are dealing with a small cast, a limited amount of time, uh, because look, it, 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 I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't think anybody is going to look at this film and think it's going to be some small little production that you guys were right. doing because it does not have that feel whatsoever. So I'm curious from Carson, like what, how do you allow yourself to make the film feel bigger than it really is uh, so that the people also can relay that when they're watching the film also? Yeah, I think it's important to um, to utilize the in as much as we, we could. We used, I think, several different arms of it and, and just sort of like when we were figuring out what the story was going to be we talked about potentially um pre-shooting some things that we end up utilizing in the movie that expand the world of the end so it feels sort okay. of like it takes place within the end and then some of the tv stuff that i won't jump to yeah into. yeah yeah no spoil no spoil <laughs> you a window outside that i think makes you feel like it's not just confined yeah. to this place and i think also um seeing them sort of like in the first couple scenes out before they arrive there allows us to sort of like feel this sort of essence of Vermont that kind of I think um, permeates the rest of the way so it's it's interesting I think our model has always been making whatever we can and have like within our means feel as big as it possibly can so I think we just sort of like in this case um, it, it started with sort of like crafting a story that um, allowed us to have a few different elements of that within um, specifically the TV stuff, I think. Carson's also really, really good uh, at finding the little pieces to that are connective tissue or to just like pop out to make something feel bigger for a second. So like okay. seeing how the scene is going, but then, you know, being like, we're going to want this, like this is going to elevate this moment or a, a few of my favorite shots in the movie. It was just, you know, thought of on the, on the quick by Carson, like, like try this or he keeps notes more than I do like on set as we're rolling about like you know this piece this piece this piece and I think this would go here and if we can get this but if we can't get this so he's he's very like uh almost like tactical about certain things and having a punch list and I think that um when you can get some of those pieces it elevates it from feeling some possibly standard to like breathing out and then mm -hmm. you get those like bigger movie moments that for sure you may not realize consciously, but you you, you do in the, the watching of it feel. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. So I only got a couple more uh, to let, and I'll let you guys go, but I really, of course, always appreciate the time. It's good seeing you guys. Um, I'm curious though, like, so this is, a, you said this is like the second film that you have involving twins, right? So um, I actually have four sets of twins in my family. So anytime, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, so anytime I see a film, with twins, I'm always curious, like why twins? Like what, what, what is it, you know, because I personally know 
a lot. I mean, I actually have cousins who've done like research stuff for Washington University uh, mm -hmm. as twins, but um, I'm always curious to like, do you guys have twins in your family? Like, cause you know, there's, cause you know, twins have their own hidden language and you guys actually played okay. a lot into some of that stuff, which I appreciated as a person who's grown up with twins my entire life. But I'm kind of curious to like background. And then, you know, Amelia, you and Taylor speak on this as well. Like it is, is there, was there any research you guys got to do on how to become twins or anything like that? Cause I'm always curious when I see twins in films. I, I think, I think we like twins because I, I don't know. It's just, it's just so specific. There's just something yeah. there about the language and the experience. Uh, so when we did our, the TV show where they played twins, there was just, I didn't know either of them. They both came in at uh, very different heights, but they both auditioned and they both, there was something about the, the mode that they had and their eyes. And I like, I, I think Taylor had auditioned first and then Amelia walked out of the room and I was like, that's it. It's them. It's them. I just, you just, I just knew. Yeah. And then we, uh, we all met and you guys can speak to the story of when you guys first met and hit it off and whatever and eventually started going to bars and convincing people that they actually were twins. Just are you just, are just you serious? Just, <laughs> yes. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> but that was yeah. but, that's, but that's really interesting to us thematically. And so especially in this movie, like them being bound in some way together was really cool and I think more potent than it just being a standard brother sister duo, which is also interesting, but in this movie I think it needed to be twins. Um, and Carson, I mean, whenever we bring it up and we're like, oh yeah, the movie about twins going to whatever, they're like, oh, the twin movie. There's just something that's very yeah, easily yeah. digestible yeah, about that. Yeah, I think um, it, adds a sense of a it adds a sense of intrigue too, and I think makes sense in the context of the story we're mm -hmm. telling. Um, and it's sort of like, uh, the, the connective sort of like, you have a connection with your twin and that's a sort of like almost supernatural thing in a way. For, it, for sure, for sure. <laughs> For sure. All right. So Taylor, so Taylor and Amelia, who who came up with the idea to, to go and start convincing people that we're oh, that you were like in Niebuhr, we were drunk at a bar. So <laughs> it was probably my idea. And then I probably yes. messed it up when we like they asked us how old we were and we both said like different ages. And they were like, ah, I gotcha. And we were like, <laughs> but we were like very proud of it. I think we tried it a second time, but um, yeah. We, <laughs> Amelia and I like got cast in this show, The Cobblestone Corridor, a couple years ago. And we like met up like in a full cast sort of hang. And then I think Amelia and I actually- We met up both, separately. Yeah, we also. met up separately before shooting. And we're like, let's sit. And like, because our characters were kind of like, they were like a little comedic relief. They were kind of like side characters that would just kind of like stand in the corner and just like okay. have little like weird moments together. Okay. Okay. But we were like- They were like the of, creepy twins. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're like, let's find sort of, uh, like a rapport together, get like a good rhythm. And so when we showed up on set for that, you know, we, you know, we had five episodes of us like being, and that was like, we were perfectly in sync. Full, full synchronicity, yeah. It would, Eric would be like, you know, and like tilt your head and we would have to be like, like at the same time, but like mm -hmm. at this, and so when we got together for this, it was just kind of, we already had that. Yeah. And I remember we like did the, we didn't do a read through of the script until we showed up in Vermont the night before we started filming and we like were in the reception area like just sitting on the couch like having beers and reading the script and i was like doing the first scene with Emil, and i was like yes like we like we still got it yeah like, five years later it was just like <laughs> riding a bike so that's crazy yeah it's super fun so Amelia, you just let you just let him take you down every single journey he wants to go down is what it sounds like, right? <laughs> um, I'm easily influenced. Um, yeah, okay, that's good to know. No, I guess I guess uh, <laughs> no, but um, it did it did really feel like we were able to build on um, the previous work we had done in Cobblestone Corridor and and kind of because even though they're different characters, they relate to one another in a similar way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think too, in terms of, you know, broadening the world of the piece, like if you say the word twins, like everyone has something that comes to mind. Everyone knows a set of twins. Everyone has, uh, has seen them in movies. Everyone kind of has a cultural reference point. And so by having that in the film, people kind of come in with like, oh, so like, this is how twins communicate like this thought of how they react and interact with one another um and so I think that just like adds a layer of audience understanding mm -hmm. um that would be a lot more difficult to build otherwise um 
yep. that yep. you know makes the makes the makes the film feel deeper and For and sure. um Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. yeah I'm, it's, you can tell there, you can definitely tell, man, the chemistry is for sure there. So last but not least, folks, last time I talked to Eric, man, we were still in the midst of a lot of stuff being shut down and going down. So I am very curious on how excited you guys are that there's going to be actually people in theater watching your film. Is that not exciting or what? Like each one of you guys give me a little bit of speak on that. Yeah, I mean, you um, said it, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, my, um, this, when this film premiered at Popcorn Frights, um, a couple, like last month, I, um, was in California, like, spending a couple of like, weeks in Los Angeles, and I was with a bunch of friends, and we were staying at his, um, dad's place for the weekend, and his dad had, like, bought the film to, like, watch it online. He was like, oh, yeah, Taylor, like, I bought your film, like, trying to, like show support and I was like oh sick so we like all sat down and watched it it was like five or six of us uh -huh. and it was like so cool so even just with like a small group of like very close friends and family mm -hmm. it was still awesome to have them like react because some of them were like not big horror buffs and they were like I'm watching this for you and then yeah, <laughs> yeah I got a lot of react and they're like oh shit they're like why is she going in there like no they're, like yes, seeing yes, the, like, yes they become you know, black women with your friends like, don't, don't open the door don't open the door you know yes it's, yes it's less and so I'm ready yeah. for like a big like theater going audience who doesn't know us for sure for sure for sure. Well, I got a feeling that people are really, really going to enjoy this. Um, this is one of those films that my friends who are big horror fans, I think are going to really enjoy. But this is like you were saying, Taylor, a film that I think we could get a lot of people who are not really necessarily horror fans because they're just going to be intrigued by the end, by the story of the twins. And then, of course, the overall story about what's going on with this, because it does, like I said at the beginning of the interview, kind of remind you of some like unsolved mysteries episode or something like that about some crazy end in the middle of nowhere but uh folks I, it? yeah unsolved mysteries something like that Unso we've talked about unsolved mysteries i'm trying to think okay of the context, but it's a great reference point okay yeah, yeah. You know, but that that mood of watching an unsolved mystery show at For like sure. o'clock at night on some channel that's kind of fuzzy that's what we want people to feel with like the, yeah big the, time in the, in the narrator and everything it's awesome yeah because the thing, you know, it's great because, you know, th there's no ghost hunting or anything, you know, this is just like, we're trying to put pieces together for something. And I think that's what kind of allows that kind of mystery feel to happen is at the end of the day, when you get finished watching the movie, you're, you're still sitting there thinking like, man, these are two individuals that are trying to put together the pieces from a past that they don't even know. You know, and, and they're and they're finding it out through all these terrible means, technically. Um, and then and then how everything just plays after that is just some, you know, you know, I'm an anime high school D and D fan, and if anybody yeah. knows what that is, they'll kind of understand what I mean by that. And when I saw Bo, I'm like, hey, that's what I'm talking about. So, guys, I really appreciate your time. This has been fantastic. I'm very, very much looking forward to everybody's reactions when they see the film, because I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, out of most of the films that I've watched in Grimfest so far, this is definitely up there and one of the top of the list. So I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, I, I'm actually going to be watching this one again. So I really, really appreciate your guys' appreciate time. Yeah, of course, man. Like, yeah. this has been great. And uh, Eric, you know, I'm always curious to what you two guys are going on, you and Carson, what you guys are build, building and developing next time. So I can't wait to see the next project that all you guys are involved in. But once again, thank you guys so much for your time. And I look forward to talking to you again in the future, okay? Thanks, Travis. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, Travis. No problem.